So welcome again to Physics 151. This is Galen Pickett. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, Chapter 1, Section 2, Detecting Interactions. And you see that right here if you've got the ebook out or you got the physical book out, Detecting Interactions. This is the third edition. So read this through. You really should do that um, in any case. But I do want to um, talk, to a, talk a little bit in detail about what is going on in Chapter 2. So, the kind of data that you can get, the only kind of information that you can get from an experiment, is to measure positions and times. And the abstract of that, so I've got my coordinate system, x, y, um, and I've got an object which I can measure at different times. There's time 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you see an object that's wandering around. You measure what is its x position. You measure what its y position at different times. And you would do that, say, in a laboratory, um, x, y at different times. And so this one's in meters, this one's in meters, this one's in seconds. And you do um, columns like that. And from that, in, from that, um, from from this data, you can make a picture that sh that reproduces pieces of the motion. So we know it started here, say, at time is equal to zero, and it was moving more or less like so. We don't know what's happening in between the uh, the dots. We only have the dots as the information that we've recorded, but that is, uh, we, we infer what the rest of the motion is like. And from this kind of data, we're going to have to be able to determine everything that's possible in the physical system. If any explanation, any um, idea about what a force is, about um, how the system is behaving, has to be has to come back from data like this. So the simplest possible system is a system in which it, there are no important interactions with the surroundings. So what you would see for an object that's doing that is the from one time to the next the distance that it goes in the x direction is the same from one time to the next, just like so. The distance it goes in the x direction is the, the same. The distance it goes in the y direction is also. The distance it goes in the y direction from one time to the next, exactly the same. And you can tell that on a picture like this. I mean, you could. It's very hard to see in a column of numbers exactly what's going on from 1 to 2 to 3, whatever. See what's going on in these numbers, but if you make a picture of it, an object that is interacting with its surroundings in no significant fashion always makes something that looks like this. So how far it moves from one time to the next, as long as these times are equally spaced, it moves the same distance, and it does not change its direction. An interaction with its surroundings is determined by these dots if you see something else happening. So something else happens. means there was an interaction. So the first thing you see, this is sometimes called Newton's first law, first law of Newton. Any motion that looks like this, so any picture, is an object that's moving free of interactions. So, what would an object that's interacting with its surroundings look like? Well, let's start an object off. It's moving at, and these are, once say, one second spaced intervals. Object's moving along, and then it interacts with its surroundings. You can tell there's an interaction because this pattern of equal distance in the same direction changes right at this time. And the only way you can tell that that changes is by looking at what happens before that time and what happens after that time. You need three pieces of information. And so for vectors, I put my origin right here, I would need r minus, r zero, and r plus. r zero minus r minus tells me what was my motion before the interaction. plus minus r0, what was the interaction after the motion? 
or after the interaction. And here, those vectors, there's that first vector and the second vector, they're the same, the way I've drawn them, drawn them here, they're the same magnitude, but they point in different directions. And that gives you a sense of what the interaction was. The interaction had to press the object in this direction. It's the only way that you would get an object changing its direction. Other important ways that an object can change its uh, motion. So here, an object is just sailing along. And at this time, I'm going to put an interaction in that direction. So now, I get even more motion. This is speeding up. Let me take the same case and put an interaction on right at this time. It points in the opposite direction, and now you see how the points are getting closer together, slowing down. So these three cases, changing direction, speeding up, and slowing down, are all cases of an interaction occurring. The interaction does, and we get information about what's the size of the interaction and the direction of the interaction from these dots, from this kind of trajectory data. And it's the same kind of data that you've got to, that you're going to have available to you um, when you propose your laboratory experiments. So now you should take a look at chapter one, section two, and see what that looks like.